Hello reviewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about dangers of wireless charging. So let's dive right into it. Now there are many brandings, many names, many hoo-ha about these things, but you have to understand there are always two core principles as of now. And uh, generally we uh, categorize them into two core categories. Category number one, inductive charging. It basically the energy carrier at this point in time becomes magnetic flux. Basically that's taking your energy from point A to point B. Another aspect is electromagnetic radiation does not matter whether you use microwave uh, radio waves uh, infrared or something else uh, millimeter waves and in those scenarios your energy carrier packets are photons so these are the two primary methods now again there will be different branding different namings but generally they will fall under these two core categories now you have to understand that like wireless te uh, technology for common people is just that you know improve our convenience and that's also a, a very little bit however there is an industry where it's a uh, basically life-saving because uh, let's imagine you have pacemaker now again in 1990s and 1980s we did had the luxury of having atomic batteries uh, those never ran out basically till your lifetime uh, but we no longer use them because of a lot of safety who has uh, regulations and uh, people being stupid with it uh, because of that now you have to have something that is a uh, we're running with a battery that will be depleted however if you have wireless charging you can charge them up every year or so now that means you don't have to surgically open a person up and remove this equipment that is life-saving that is fundamental because like yeah one or two surgeries will not harm you but if you have to do it regularly enough that area will become permanently scarred and permanently wounded it's not a good thing imagine it this way let's say you could have hearing aids that is here again how many times do you think it's uh, acceptable to like slice it open that's why like in medical implants technology this is priceless it's really good technology there but for common people not really that useful because again you are talking about almost putting on charger pad it's like you are there already just just plug it in so that is the core principle either use magnetic flux or photons to carry your energy now the first uh, and simpler method is inductive charging because it's inherently like a transformer now if you have ever seen a transformer even in study this uh, diagram which i'm pretty sure if you're past school you would have studied is like there are two systems uh, two co uh, coils of wire but they are not electrically shorted basically you cannot run a continuity from here to here unless it's damaged equipment so how the heck electrically isolated it can still transmit power utilizing magnetic flux now one thing you have to understand air can carry magnetic flux it's not a you know basically contact one absolute stop it will carry it but it's very inefficient so utilizing basically magnetic core uh, we reach a point where it's a very efficient to it and think of just energy generally tries to take the path of least resistance and utilizing this iron core we get the point of hey energy just wants to go through that and this is like okay go flow, flow through me i don't care so in this sort of scenario this allows us very high energy efficient coupling between primary side and secondary side so this is quite awesome we have been using it for what almost 100, 100 200 years so this is an amazing thing and nikola tesla even showed uh, wireless transfer basically by removing this uh, transformer core the iron core and uh, it travel through air but is inefficient so be mindful it can be done it's a normal technology we have been doing this basically you can have two coils and they are resonating with a proper frequency it can easily transmit power it's a known thing we have been doing it for centuries uh, it's just that it's very inefficient now one thing the easiest way to spot whether it's a uh, inductive charging or photon based is generally uh, they have very short range and i mean short as in half a meter basically if you have a base station you either have to put it on top of it or almost near it basically almost touching distance so at that point in time that is the easiest way to spot out hey whether it's inductive charging or not because magnetic flux if they have to go through air they lose a lot of their energy now if they have to go much further yeah they simply will not travel that no matter what you do you have to put like kilowatts of energy on one end then you will get few watts on the other end so drop off is ludicrously drastic that's why it almost have to be touching it almost have to be touching and every material that's why you will see people talking about hey uh, it has to have certain kind of uh, backing it cannot utilize just you know glass backing or things like that. not because uh, glass is stopping it's just like adding extra resistance that resistance when you're talking about only uh, you know basically few watts of power that resistance could translate to hey it's like you send five watts the glass itself end up distorting like three watts out of it so then it's a two watt charging maybe too slow to keep it up so fundamentally that is why you have to understand these things there are fundamental limitation of this using air as a uh, basically flux carrier so it does work it's a known technology and in uh, certain circumstances very high efficiency can be achieved so 90 percent has been achieved in a lab now be mindful i am very skeptical of every lab uh, lab results simply because most of them never translate to real life but this at least shows in principle in physics and in some level of engineering that 
there is a, a limit where we can achieve at least 90 percent now what about your real life real life is generally 40 percent and if you are in like one of those lucky scenarios where like you know everything aligned up properly your uh, weather humidity your temperature ambient temperature everything lined up perfectly you can achieve as high as 60 percent but generally we are talking about 40 percent uh, that's like you can put a usb power meter to measure it out and you will always find it is like uh, 40 percent and if you're really lucky really really lucky you may touch 60. most of the time you will never touch that but you get the point like that's almost like you know push your car too much that you might achieve that so these are the two core principles that it can achieve 90 percent we have never achieved it in normal mass production environment uh 40 percent is normal average but you may be expecting like in you know few iterations once we refine the technology once we have better coil designs better coupling frequencies everything has improved we may achieve 60 percent and it is very short range as in less than a meter now let's talk about radiation carrier aka photons now uh, i've already covered electromagnetic radiation in detail however i did find a issue is that i'm unable to convey how the heck you're supposed to evaluate whether this radiation is dangerous or not now this time i will try my best to simplify this as much as possible that you have to understand there are three core factors and all three combined with the tells it whether it's safe or dangerous you have to be very mindful if uh, two of these are like you know against you you could be like radio waves some completely basically radio waves can go through human body without a, a too much attenuation basically it's not dumping too much energy inside your body but if you increase the watt capacity of it basically the amounts of photon going through it you go, go yolo up like, like 10 megawatts up like it's a uh, ra radio telescope and you were in the beam path yeah no no you, you will simply be cooked so fundamentally that's why you have to understand there are three core factors so core factor number one photon frequency basically how quickly that photon is vibrating and that will uh, affect how much energy it can dump when it interacts with something and each spectrum has a unique characteristic for example radio transparent to most things microwave does not like water that's why it heats up your uh, basically food in microwave oven infrared uh, it heats up almost everything then you are talking visible you are seeing me utilizing visual light then you are talking ultraviolet now now we are at a point where this energy level is high enough that if it hits you correctly it's gonna cook you translation uh this photon even if you are talking about let's say 10 watt or 20 watts if you put it in a water tub it can uh, basically sterilize the water and we utilize that that's why we utilize that's why we have ultraviolet water purifier because even though energy basically the wattage is low enough because of the high intensity of the photon frequency it will destroy any bacteria or virus that it touches it will not cause you harm if uh, you are exposed to it because your body is big enough it can absorb the impact of it unless you are constantly exposed for a very long time and then it will give you damage then we come to x-ray more powerful but the same thing is like if the exposure is very little basically the wattage you're talking about is very little it will not have much impact that's why you can take an x-ray and it's not gonna do anything however uh, if you pay attention to people who do x-ray uh, imagery of humans they generally they themselves are very well protected they have like lead shielding the clothes are lead lined and th there is a reason for that it's like it's not gonna do anything to you in one day or even hundreds of scan over lifetime but for a person that is doing like you know 10 scans a day 10 why oh, and it's too little 20 scans a day yeah that's that's gonna pile up for them they have to have protection then we come to gamma rays this is the highest energy level photons are naturally occurring and these are idiotically powerful but again it's still safe for humans if you keep the wattage low enough how do you know we utilize this for medical treatment of cancer it's a known thing we utilize it. that's why you have to understand the, all three criteria will tell you whether it's safe or unsafe because like in common sense, you'll say, whoa, ultraviolet, dangerous. Again, we use it for water purification. X-ray, super dangerous. We do X-ray on our body every day. Uh, not every day, but you get the point. Airport workers, they do it every day almost. Uh, gamma radiation, we use that to cure cancer. So fundamentally speaking, you have to know all other aspects also. So it's almost like uh, electricity when you're talking about it. It's like voltage alone is not does not mean anything unless you know voltage and ampere. So same goes here. So that's the photon frequency and anything above ultraviolet, you are reaching into territory, what we call ionizing radiation. Basically, if it hits you correctly, it's going to destroy your DNA. Now, uh, that creates a unique circumstances that even few photons going through you, if they hit it correctly, it's going to cause damage. Then we come to the amount part. This is the simplest aspect. It's like, think of this way. Let's say you are talking about a microwave, but there is a 10 megawatt microwave generator. What will happen if you are in front of it? If your common sense says that I should be cooked, yes, that will happen. Not because the uh, you know radiation is like quote unquote high frequency ionizing radiation, but it has so much amount in it. It's like yeah, it's gonna destroy. It's like uh, what happens if ludicrously heavy rainfall happens, even you know mountains erode at that point in time. Same thing. So 
you have to have these two core factors to even start to figure out and i can give you a simple example for example uh, microwave is used in your mobile phone you can have your mobile phone next to your ear you're not going to be cooked you may feel a bit warm but nothing else is going to happen but what if you did that in a mobile tower this is consuming let's say very large mobile towers they will have power ratings of like four kilowatts or five kilowatts and there is a very strict restriction that if the tower is on do not be on top of it basically do not be like this when it's on if you're doing repair work if it's shut down no problem but if it's on do not be there that's too much energy so even the spectrum is safe the en en energy is high enough that it will cause you serious harm and like you know old uh, old broadcast televisions that they had like giant towers it was like very clear uh, designation is like dude only t uh, you know climb on this when it's like you know it's been off for four or five hours so these are the two core factors now you have another third aspect that defines whether it's safe enough for you or not that is photon density basically how small of a area that this energy is there for example i have a 100 watt uh, led lamp strip here now what will happen if i take that 100 watt of photon output and i collapse that into let's say one millimeter square or no, one millimeter is still too big let's say one under one millimeter what a, that's a laser like you can buy 40 watt laser cutter that can cut through steel now again thin steel but you get the point 100 watt that's a powerful laser and we have like lights that are like you know a uh, few kilowatts in our homes like some halogen lamps your car lamps and all that but why the heck it's not dangerous for us why it's not setting everything in fire because density is low these three things combine and how do we know density uh, all mobile phones have this rating sar value uh, generally it's in uh, india it's around 1.8 to 1.6 and uh, in european union it's up to two so two watts per kilogram so that's you have to understand and the mobile towers are ludicrously high in that regard because they have to because they are uh, taking care of a lot of people and that's why the mobile tower uh, height is also defined by that if they are really really powerful they will be really really tall to make sure no humans are affected by it it's almost like how we have high voltage lines it's like the height goes up directly proportional to how high voltage it is like 11 kv line that's not gonna be that high 33 kv line okay now we are talking some serious height now 200 kv line you can easily see dude this is a 200 kv line because it's ludicrously tall so that's how we understand whether it's dangerous or not you have to account for all these three things yes in certain scenario low amounts of ultraviolet can give you a skin damage uh, in high enough uh, amount uh, wattage x-ray is gonna annihilate you in low enough it can cause harm gamma rays in low enough it's gonna cause harm in high enough it's guaranteed it's gonna cause you harm but does that mean infrared is not dangerous? no you, you can still be cooked with it a microwave definitely can cook you alive uh, radio still radio is the like a least severe because you have to go ludicrously high because of its transparency it can go through us without uh, dumping too much energy but even it also has a point like let's say somebody is using for radio uh, research and all that they are using 10 megawatt pulse generator and you stand in front of it bye bye then we wattage is a easiest factor then SARS value is like how big is the antenna if the antenna is this small it's dangerous if it's this big not dangerous so that's why you have to analyze all three only then you will have some idea whether it's safe or dangerous now we come to the photon based systems which efficiency wise now i already talked about the efficiency of uh, basically inductive charging it is not that efficient how about this it's even worse basically that makes inductive charging look super amazing because this best case scenario be mindful these are optimistic beyond optimistic numbers two to ten percent that's the best case scenario that's like think of this way like, that's why our solar panels are barely 10 percent uh 20 percent efficient like barely like yeah you can buy multi-junction solar panel which cost million dollar per square foot uh but good luck with that so and that will also only achieve 40 percent uh that is why nobody was utilizing this photon based system there are many companies that have tried microwave radio waves infrared and other things also including millimeter wave it's like mi system is not the world's first one which people tried with uh, this millimeter waves the reality is always simple it's idiotically inefficient it's like two to ten percent basically um because of inverse square law uh, the fact that every meter it travels the energy drop is not like okay it's half like you know if one x is at uh, one meter two x it would be like a uh, one half no it's like it would be square of that square root of that and if you keep doing that you will like oh dude by the time i reach the third meter it's gone the energy is almost gone and that's why uh, your mobile towers will consume megawatts of power but your mobile antennas have to be designed in such a way that it can really work on like milliwatts microwatts or almost touching nanowatts of power it has to work on that uh, system uh, basically low, low level of energy simply because of the distance involved and that distance is in straight line i'm not even talking about what will happen if i have to go through brick walls uh, it will get attenuated to hell so 
fundamentally because of the inverse square law it fundamentally is only limited to short range now range of this puppy is a bit better than uh, inductive charging because inductive less than one meter this in principle in theory can achieve like it like mid sun if you have solar cell uh, you know you can understand that we are getting power directly from sun but it's very inefficient and um, if you're talking about providing the power yourself uh, to give you a best case scenario ev blog did an amazing detailed video i have provided down below but to give you a rough best case the best case scenario five watts charging on your mobile phone five meters away to uh, you know uh, from the base station would need more than 500 watts of power and this is ludicrously efficient i'm talking about like like this is god tier level efficiency if they could achieve this yes that's how bad it is because of inverse square law and how many times you have to convert and uh, deconvert it and not to mention because of the density uh, this box is too powerful there is a very serious law and regulation it's like that's why your router is not like 50 watt router you will never find hey this router is like 50 watt why there is like you can make a router we have equipments that are that powerful but it's like bro that's too much powerful so either we only use that for you know point to point like clear line of sight from you know on top of a building not person not supposed to be in that you know line of sight not like this where you are sitting next to it that is too high density like that is very frustrating part is like there is a very good chance that it simply might not cross any legal um, rules and regulation you can do that in lab but like the moment they try to sell it the SARS value would be too high and they're like nope they can just nope it because you have to spread it out otherwise uh, the concentration the density is too damn high it will simply cook you so efficiency wise like that's why like motorola when they launched it like you can see that it's a barely like one meter barely 100 centimeter one meter that's not good enough it's like really really frustrating part that people are ignoring the efficiency aspect and it's like it makes inductive look good that's how bad the efficiency is and there is no way you can even achieve that 90 percent that was achievable with other systems fundamentally no just nope now i classified this uh, video as a danger of uh, wireless charging why the heck i'm calling this dangerous well it's basically you want to burn the planet down simply because you are too goddamn lazy it's like oh we have so many planets man we can like we have hundreds of planets why what if we burn down one planet it's like dude we have only one planet and i really really cannot justify this is the fact that this is the reason why you're burning the planet down is that doing this like you know plugging a cable is so hard work it's like I want to save the planet but i can't be bothered to plug the goddamn cable i will burn the planet down it's like that's why it horrified me is that the moment every youtuber was like you know this is amazing technology no this is the worst technology ever it's like yes can we do it and i specified for medical implants this is god sent there is no discussion about that but for minor convenience burning your planet down for minor convenience and all these people are like we have to care about the planet i'm like do you use wireless charging you don't care about the plant because here's the deal if you're talking about even induction charging it's waste more than half flat out it's like charging uh, you are wasting energy equivalent of charging two phones now that does not sound too bad but here's the deal. imagine it how many uh, wireless charging phones are there now in the market you are talking about a million devices that means each million devices is consuming equivalent of two million devices that amount of energy has to come from a power plant or you might be like, what about solar? Yes, see, those solar panels still have to be made. They are not magically, they are not falling from the sky. We have to physically build. That creates a carbon ca cost of it. We are, And you are wasting that carbon cost. Like, again, if that amount of electricity went into, let's say, pumping water, people would be like, dude, that's acceptable cost. If that amount of energy went into just you being lazy to a point where it's like, dude, doing this is too hard. Now tell me, tell me how will you going to justify that? That's why I say if it's a worthy cause, people will spend energy. It's like you're going to ask someone, hey, uh, would you drive a car? Like, you know, that's not very efficient. But somebody says like, Dude, will you drive this ambulance? It's very inefficient. But would you drive it? You will say, yes. Why? Life matters. So in those sort of scenarios, it's not. It's not something that is good for planet or for anyone to be that lazy. Like, think of this. And that's why, like, uh, nobody give a damn about, like, yeah, wireless well, technology. Oh, fun novelty. Once it started to pick up, it's like, dude, why the heck this whole country's, uh, you know, this whole county's power bill is going double up? Oh, new phone was released and those phones had wireless charging. Everybody started to do that. And because of the uh, amount of people and amount of mobile phones, that power spike was so high. So this is the whole point. And imagine it this way. Every single uh, person started to do photon-based system. God help us. That's like uh, adding 10 mobile phone per house per mobile phone. So if house has like, let's say three or four mobile phones, multiply that by 10. Damn, that's really, really bad. And uh, if uh, you try that with cars, like uh, people are like, hey, induction charging car, new technology, awesome. Eh? You are fundamentally reducing the range of the car because you are adding giant weight to it. So that itself is a bad idea. B, 90% efficient, while that sound good, it means why the heck you are wasting that 10%? Why? Because all you could not be bothered to do this, like, you know, plug that stuff in. 
like really like you and 10 percent when you're talking about the electric car that's a lot of energy you are talking about let's say a high-end uh, sedan kind of electric sedan is talking about around 100 kilowatt of power you are wasting 10 kilowatt of power why you are wasting 10 kilowatt of power just so you can be too bit lazier like really like think about it like you are driving an electric car to sell the uh, hey i'm caring about the environment i'm saving the world like you're burning 10 kilowatts of energy why like this is the dangerous aspect like right tool for the right job it, if you are in a scenario where this is the only option like for example pacemaker uh, hearing aids things of that nature awesome anything else why why are you doing that like fundamentally why you're burning the only planet we have it is too inefficient to use like for research development awesome go go you on it but it's like the fact that uh, so many youtubers were like this is the cutting edge of technology and again if people uh, think it's a cutting edge of technology people will admit like that's why like uh, nobody was giving a damn even the chi charging alliance themselves did the mathematics and they're like whoa, 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 whoa if it actually picks up like we will increasing of the power consumption by like you know thousands of megawatt in one country we are just increasing the power consumption just for law just so you can be like so this was the dangerous aspect of it like it's a good technology for right application it's amazing technology but just so you can be a bit lazy and you want to burn the planet and to give you a context of that that 500 watt uh, my win uh, my home is going through winter right as well i'm recording this video and uh, it gets cold so i have a heater but because the heater is running for a long time i'm not running at full power i'm running at 500 watts that's a room heater and that 500 watt energy cannot be get or destroyed will turn into waste heat so you are literally heat have a 500 watt heater just so you can charge a mobile phone at five watts and uh, what does that mean that simply means if you are rich enough to buy that you are rich enough to run air condition that means your air condition will have to pump that extra heat continuously how much is that heat that heat is around three watt people sleeping like if you have three persons that's their body heat like you can cool three people or you can just cool a goddamn equipment that is like you are utilizing just because you're so goddamn lazy you can't do this so that's why the dangers of it the fact that people are like you know uh, falling over themselves like dude i want to buy this or like you know this is the next amazing greeting thing it's like really like this is dangerous for our planet it's like uh, this sort of people are like i want to drive ev car but like i could not be bothered to like you know save the planet by just like you know plugging the damn thing it's like that's that's a line too far like i can't be bothered to plug the car damn cars in and, like that's why it's really scary it's like so many people are trying to justify it it's like dude we have muscles we're good we're solid we are capable we can do this we can use our hands so this was my presentation uh, of uh, basically wireless charging. I hope you liked it or got aware of the dangers involved in this. So in that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.